James, I was a businessman. I was not engaged or involved in politics at all, uh, but I took the view back in the, in the early 1990s that the European project was the wrong thing for us, the wrong thing for Europe, um, and that's what got me involved in politics. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I battled a bit. Um, I often thought I was going to become the patron saint of lost causes, um, but I kept <laughs> on going. Um, and I think, you know, objectively, James, there would not have been a referendum without my efforts. There um, and we had that referendum. We, we had that referendum, we won it, and I thought my job was done. I thought I could move into doing a few different things in life. But frankly, what came out of Chequers today uh, was a complete betrayal, not just, by the way, of how people voted in the referendum, but how they voted in the general election. Because Mrs. May was very clear in her manifesto uh, what was going to happen, that we were leaving the single market, leaving the customs union, we'd be an independent country. And what came out of Chequers was unacceptable. And what I'm saying is this. I'm pleased that David Davis has resigned. I'm pleased that Boris has, has decided to step aside. Um, I think this prime minister needs to go. We will not get a clean democratic Brexit under Mrs. May. And if the Conservative Party do not come to their senses, then yes, when there is a leadership contest in UKIP at the end of March next year, which is due, um, I would then seriously consider throwing my hat back in the ring. Um, and I can promise you, you know, uh, Conservative MPs sitting in marginal constituencies, if, if there was a strong UKIP candidate there, they would all lose their seats. So what I'm saying is, I don't want to do this, but I bloody well will if I have to. Nigel, why don't you talk to some of your friends in the Conservative Party and maybe stand as a Tory? Because they hate me, James. They hate me. I mean, you know, for many, many years, the one thing you could not say at a Tory dinner party was, I think we should leave the EU. Uh, you know, you could endorse criminality and get away with it, <laughs> but the EU was always the issue because they knew that there was a fault line in the party that could split it and could destroy it. And because it was me that exposed that, uh, they'll never forgive me. And under this leadership, they wouldn't touch me with a barge pole. Now... If there was a different Tory leader who really wanted Brexit and they asked me to help, I might think differently. But we're nowhere near that stage at the moment. All right. Now, I know people find it difficult to believe that you and I are quite pally, uh, although we yeah. have perhaps different views on this. But I, I think sometimes you get a bad press because you don't want to see us crashing out of a relationship with Europe like some people uh, say, oh, yes, let's just tell them to go stuff themselves and we'll go our, our own way. You don't believe in that at all, really, do you? Oh, no. Look, for goodness sake, I mean, I spent much of my career working for French banks. I have got um, two children. Uh, with a German lady. Uh, they're bilingual. Um, they spend time in Germany. Um, I've drunk more French wine than most people alive. Um, I love you. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> well, maybe you'll challenge not, me, James. I'm not not over. after my hangover on Saturday, anyway, yeah. <laughs> but no, I mean, look, I, I, I want a Europe of cooperative nation states. I want us yeah. to be like neighbours living, living in a street together, uh, working very closely together, having reciprocity on student exchanges, doing all sorts of... But I want a Europe of neighbours. I don't want a Europe run by a bunch of unelected old men in Brussels um, who we can't vote for and we can't remove. And I, you know, I passionately want France to be independent and Italy to be independent. And, and I'll tell you something, the tide of history is actually taking us in that direction anyway. Why do you think... Um that it has been so difficult to get that point across. Because I, I agree with you. I think what we need to do mm. is rescue our relationship with Europe. In fact, I like to think we should be leading Europe rather than leaving it in a way. And I don't understand why it has become so entrenched that so many people, uh, Boris included, has been quite rude to businesses um, in his campaigning. I don't know whether he's lost the plot. I don't know whether the Conservative guys have just not really got hold of the situation. It seems a mess that we could have wow. well avoided. Why didn't they use you as some kind of uh, go-between? I'm sure you could have done a, well, a marvellous you know, job. Do you know, I made it clear at the time of the referendum, that if I could be any use to them at all, uh, you know, in these negotiations, I would have been. Um, I also made it clear, as just about the only person in Britain, perhaps apart from Piers Morgan, who's got a relationship with Donald Trump, that I would happily have acted as a, you know, a, a sort of go-between, a bridge, if you like, between the new American administration um, and the government. And they just, they just try to pretend I don't even exist, James. I mean, when you think that number 10 made it a red line 
to the White House that as part of the Trump trip, he wasn't allowed to meet me. Mm -hmm. You realize how petty minded and small minded these career politicians are. And let me reemphasize that point. These are career politicians. Hardly any of them could do a proper job in the real world. All they worry about are their careers and their and their really rather ghastly mm. conservative party. I mean, you're absolutely right. The the fact is that none of them from both sides, by the way, of the front bench, that mm. the, the uh, Labour or the Conservatives tonight wanted to talk about this issue. They only wanted to put people up to talk about it in uh, the manner which they could control. Yeah. Uh, they mm -hmm. don't want any more to have free speech in this country, as far as I can see, because you have to go through a press officer. Now, let me make this absolutely yeah. clear. I just rang Nigel oh. and asked him would he do the interview, and he thought about it for a few moments and said, yes, I will. And if, if this is the way politics is going to go, that no politicians are going to speak to the media, then Donald Trump is going to be absolutely right. It will become all fake <clears throat> news, won't it? Yeah, it will. And, and Trump has been very good at exposing some of these things. I know Donald's a bit rough around the edges sometimes. Oh, we, listen, we like him on this programme now. We're big fans of Donald Trump on this show. Yeah, we are, yeah. yeah. Pleased to hear it. I'm pleased to hear it. Nigel, can we just... I, I mean, are you really going to consider running for... Isn't it your duty to run for UKIP if, if it's all a fudge? <laughs> Well, why, why are you even considering it? I, I tell you what, it's not my desire. It's about the last thing on earth I want to do, because it's 24-7, yeah, yeah. you yeah. take endless abuse, a massive level of intrusion into your life. Um, I mean, there isn't much upside to it, but, you know, I fought for a quarter of a century uh, to, get, to get us to a position where we won that referendum, and I cannot... I cannot stand aside and see a bunch of gutless, spineless, useless career politicians throw it away. So I'm putting them on notice. I'm putting them on warning. You know, if you didn't like me before, if I have to come back and do this again, next time, no more Mr Nice Guy. Well, I, I'm glad to hear that, but I do think you should be getting yourself elected as a Conservative Member of Parliament because I can see you becoming the Prime Minister uh, they hate him, though, no, James. Yeah, well, well, they might. In, in the story, Some, so. No, no, no. Some of them might hate him. They respect him, him but... but it's not up to them. It's up to the people who vote. And if, oh. you, if Nigel was to stand as a Conservative, I'm pretty sure he'd be in Parliament yeah, now. Well, yeah. UKIP still has a bit of a bad reputation for having a few nutcases around, doesn't it? That was the trouble. Well, it does, James, but then look at the Conservative Party. Well, yeah, no, I know. <laughs> got the, I, like, well, they... <laughs> I just thought that when I was saying it. I thought, what a silly thing to say when you... I mean, but here's a serious thing, Nigel. We've got three months until this negotiation has to be carried out. Three months. You can't get a new Conservative leader. It takes three months to do that. What is going to uh, no, happen? No, it's no, going to be delayed, no, no, isn't it? No, 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 no. Now, look, don't delude yourself. During the month of August, Monsieur Barnier will be sunning himself on a southern French beach. Of course he will be. Brussels will be closed down. Now, what the Tory party could do through their party board is they could concertina that three-month process into the month of August. There is nothing to stop a Tory leadership contest happening within the month of August, and we would have lost very little time at all. We just need a leader that actually believes in Brexit and in carrying out the democratic wishes of the people, as expressed, not just in a referendum, but in a general election too. It, it, you know, everything in life is possible if you believe you can do it. Boris Johnson or David Davis? Um, I, I like both of them. Um, but I, I like both of them. Jacob rees um, But I, but I, but no. I think the one man, I think the one man, who maybe could just catch the imagination of the public, because of his absolute sincerity and honesty, is Jacob rees -Mogg. Really? Yes, really. He's, you, uh, James, you, he's you, honest. He's he's, he's no. honest. He's straight with me. And would you work under uh, him then as a Tory? Well, I don't listen. We're miles away from that. I just, you know, I'm not interested in having a career in politics. No, no, no. I just want this country to be no. independent. and I want us mm -hmm. to lead uh, the rest of Europe towards a better Europe for everybody. And once that's done, you know, I can go back to going fishing and going down the pub. Good, because I could just do with a pint now, to be quite honest with yeah, you. So could I. So yeah. could I. So yeah. could I. And I'm, about, I'm, I'm about to solve that problem. Good. Well, I wish I could. In a couple of hours, I will. Now, listen, what, what about you talking to Jacob Rees-Mogg, if he's your choice as a potential leader to the Conservative Party? Uh, and what if you were to be given by him uh, an in uh, to a seat, possibly well, a safe seat in well, the Conservative Party? 
as I say, as I say, my motivation is getting Brexit done, not getting elected to Parliament. I've, I, you know, I will, by next March, have completed 20 years in the European Parliament. That's quite a long time. Um, so, you know, getting into Parliament is not my absolute number one priority. Um, let's just get this checkers deal gotten rid of and let's please see the back of this worst prime minister that I've seen in my lifetime. They're my priorities. Do you think she'll be gone before Brexit is done? I think she'll be gone before the end of the summer. At least I hope so.